name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Today's Mass is offered for the intention of unity in the Church. Today we will reflect on the life of St. John of Capistrano, Confessor. This saint's life is an apt illustration of the inscrutable ways of divine providence. Born on the 24th of June, 1386 at Capestrano in the Abruzzi Mountains of central Italy to a baron named Antony, he studied both civil and canon law at per Pergia with brilliant success and at the age of 27 was appointed governor of Perugia, then papal or part of the papal states. He was successful in combating civic corruption, but in 1416, when the city was captured by the Mala Testa and John went to entreat for peace, he was cast into a dungeon. His imprisonment caused him to consider seriously the state of his own soul and when he was released he made up his mind to abandon the world entirely in obedience to Saint Francis who had appeared to him in a dream. John entered the Franciscan order on the 4th of October 1415. He was ordained as a priest in 1425 and began his preaching career which took him to many of the principal cities of Italy. So outstanding was his success that before long the largest churches could not contain his hearers and he would preach to some 20,000 to 30,000 in the open squares. Great miracles of healing accompanied his preaching and further spread his fame abroad so that on one occasion, he was asked to make the sign of the cross over some 2,000 sick who had been brought to the mission. Like his mentor, St. Bernardin of Siena, his strong Christian optimism drove him to battle problems at all levels with the confidence emanating from a deep faith in Christ. St. John breathed his last on the 23rd of October 1456 and was canonized by Pope Alexander VIII on the 16th of October 1690. Let these words of Saint Augustine be our prayer. I will not live an instant that I do not live in love. Whoever loves does all things without suffering or suffering loves his suffering. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, you my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in, in my thoughts and in, in my words, in what I have done, done and in what I have failed to do, to do through my, my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, unto you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John of Capistrano to comfort your faithful people in tribulation, place us, we pray, under your safe protection and keep your church in everlasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Our response shall be, such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Such, Such are, are the men, men who, who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its people. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things. Response, such, such are, are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Lord. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. Response, such, such are, are the men, men who Lord. seek your face, O, o Lord. Lord. Kindly rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to the multitudes, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, A shah is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearances of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? As for you, you go with your accuser before the magistrate. Make an effort to settle with him on the way, lest he drag you to the judge and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer put you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out till you have paid the very last copper. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today we shall reflect on the theme the importance of reading the signs of the time. And we see that in today's world, it is absolutely necessary to read the signs of the time and to act accordingly. Whether it is in the financial sector, whether it's in the academic sector, or even in sports, we see that reading the signs of the time and acting quickly makes all the difference. And therefore we see some of the well-executed strategies are those that are based 
on quick thinking and acting swiftly. And therefore today we can all imagine that Jesus is asking us this question. How good are you at reading the warning signs? Jesus expects his disciples to accurately read the signs of the time. Now we all know that seafarers and farmers know the importance of spotting the weather conditions for a safe travel and the farmers for planting a crop. And a lot of effort has been made today with science and technology. A lot of effort has been put in order to accurately determine the weather conditions. And therefore, similarly, in our lives too, Jesus invites us to accurately interpret the signs of the time, to look into ourselves and to discover what things are important, what things are necessary and what action should we take in order to remedy some of the wrongs that we have done. St. Paul in the letter to the Ephesians exhorts us to make every effort to preserve the unity. Now St. Paul from prison, he pleaded with his Christian brothers and sisters to live a life that was worthy of their calling. This meant that they had to be humble, they had to be meek, they had to long for each other and at the same time they had to be loving and caring towards one another. And this radically different way of life was necessary to preserve and deepen the early church's unity in the spirit. The priority which he emphasizes is the unity of the body, the unity of the spirit, unity in hope, unity in the Lord, unity in faith, in baptism, and unity in God. And this sevenfold unity we see is still important and necessary for our lives so that we may be worthy to respond to the call of God. If we glance at the life, of St. John Capistran, we see that he too was gifted with the grace to bring people closer to God. And we see that through his preachings and through his miracles, he was able to give new life into the people. He was able to give them a clear interpretation of the word of God and thus he was able to strengthen their faith. Similarly, we see it was only because of the faith and confidence that he had in the Lord that he was able to do all such marvelous works. And if we come to today's gospel, Jesus tells us not to miss God's kingdom and the power to transform our lives. Our need for accurately discerning the spiritual condition and the moral climate around us is of vital importance if we want to avert some spiritual crisis or moral disaster. And the Lord is ready to transform our lives. He gives us the grace. He gives us all that we need in order to transform our lives and to correct the wrongs that we have done. But once again, as always, He waits for us to turn to Him. And therefore, we see He has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us the power, the peace, the joy, and all this he gives us to transform our lives. But it is very easy to miss all these graces if we allow ourselves to be pessimistic. If we say to ourselves that, okay, this is a small sin, you know, I can get away with this. If we do such things, slowly one sin leads to another and ultimately it becomes too late. And therefore we see that Jesus in today's gospel uses a very vivid illustration. Now he says that there is a man who has accused another person. And they see that the other person, knowing that his case is not that strong, he tries to settle it with the other man before going to court. And here we see that that other person is acting wisely. Because since he knows that his case is not very strong, he definitely knows that when he goes to the court, the judge will give him a harsh sentence. And therefore, when he has the opportunity, he tries to lessen the troubles that he has. And similarly, Jesus invites us to do the same. 
when we have the opportunity when he gives us the chance to turn to him he tells us make use of that opportunity and at that time to repent and come to him but if we say that we shall do it later or if we say that okay nothing is going to happen it may become too late for us but jesus is ready to set us free with the holy spirit he has given us the gift of the holy spirit and all of us are in need of god's mercy all of us are in the situation of sin and here god gives us the power to come out of this situation the lord jesus is a physician and a healer and therefore he is ready to set us free from any sinful patterns of thinking acting and speaking if we give our lives over to him he will fill us with the holy spirit and he will give us a new heart that is transformed a new heart that is willing to share with others to be united with him and to be united with the others so today in a very special way let us pray for ourselves that we too may be able to discern the signs of the time that we may know what is important in our lives that we may introspect and see where we are going wrong and at the same time let us also pray for unity unity in the church unity in our families as well as unity in our society amen and now let us all together pray to the lord to help us during these times during these times of the pandemic let us all together say almighty and merciful god who show your love to all creation everywhere hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the corona virus in various parts of the world we come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families we pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found we pray for the government and the health authorities that they may take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer to christ our lord amen Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Most merciful God, who are pleased to create in Saint Joseph of John of Capistrano the new man in your image, the old having passed away, graciously grant, we pray. that renewed like him we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation through Christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it, it is, is right, right and, and just. just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father 
Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as on the festival of St. John Capistrano you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. By the power of the sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of St. John and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer to St. Francis Xavier. O devoted servant of God, St. Francis Xavier, your heart was burning with love for Jesus. Impelled by this love, you went from country to country and spent yourself unto death, proclaiming the name of Jesus and the good news of salvation. That is why the Father filled you with glory in heaven and preserved your body from corruption here on earth. Filled with joy for these unique gifts, we join you in praising the Father. And now we ask your intercession for ourselves. Let's silently pray for the grace that each of us require. We ask you to obtain for us the fulfillment of these desires if they are pleasing to the Father. And for everything, together with you, we praise the Father through Jesus in the Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Thank you.